Here is a very interesting question for you. A nonlinear sequence. You need to find the general term and then the next three terms. We are going to adopt two different approaches to find the solution. One of them is for those who understand polynomials and the other who understand logic. Well, at the end of the video, you'll be able to appreciate both the methods and do similar difficult questions easily. Now, let us see how do we solve such questions. Thank you. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. Let us take this challenge question now. Find the general term and then write the next three term for the sequence 7, 16, 29, 46, 67. So let me write down the sequence for you. It is 7, 16, 29, 46, 67, and so on, right? So the sequence continues. We need to find the general term and then write the next three terms for the sequence. This is a very interesting question based on nonlinear pattern rules. I would like you to pause the video, answer, rather attempt, and then look into my suggestions. We are going to follow a few strategies to answer such questions. One of the most popular ways of doing this is to find the first difference and then to see what kind of sequence it is. So our first step is to find the first difference. Now what is first difference? First difference is the difference between the consecutive terms, right? So, so difference between the consecutive terms. Consecutive terms are 7, 16. So, 16 minus 7, that is the first difference we are looking into. So, we are doing 16 minus 7, you get the idea. So, you'll do 16 minus 7 and what you get is 9. So, I'm writing 9 here as the first difference between the terms 7 and 16. Now, let us check the difference between 16 and 29. Well, 29 minus 16 is what? 9 take away 6 is 3. And 2 take away 1 is 1. Now we'll do the difference between 46 and 29. 16 take away 9 is 7. Left with 3. 3 take away 2 is 1. And now the difference between 67 and 46. 7 take away 6 is 1. 6 take away 4 is 2. So we get 21. So we notice that first difference is not constant. So now let us find the second difference. So we we'll again follow the same procedure, but this time we'll take up the terms which we got in the first difference. So we'll do 13 take away 9, which gives us 4. 17 take away 13 will also give us 4. 21 take away 17 is also 4. So we see that this is constant. That implies what? It implies that the polynomial of degree 2 is the equation which will represent this sequence. We are looking for a quadratic equation that means. Since the first difference is not constant, we know it is nonlinear, correct? And now, when the second difference is constant, we know that quadratic equation is the solution. So, the equation will be of the form of ax square plus bx plus c. 
Now the idea is how do we get this equation where x is the number of terms, right? So, so the term number 1, term number 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. These are the term numbers. In the equation, if you put in the term number, you get the general term. You get the idea. So, let me write down the general term as Tx, which will be Ax square plus Bx plus C, where x will give us the term number. You get the idea. Now, how do we get this equation? For that, we have a couple of strategies. The grade 11 and 12 students can use polynomial equations and the concepts learned. How about the junior grade students who have not learned writing polynomial equations from the data? For them, we'll have a logical approach. So, we have two strategies here. One, let's call this A as using polynomials and B as logic. So, let's work with the logic first. We'll get back to the polynomials and come back to logic to find the equation. This sounds good? Okay. So, let's go to the logical part. So, what we figured out in this case is that second difference is constant. So, we have these terms 7, 16, 29, 46, 67. We found that the first difference is not constant. 16 take away 7 was 9 and then 29 take away 16 gave us 13. And then 46 take away 29 gave us 17. And then we got 21 as a difference between 46 and 67. And we also figure out that the second difference was constant, which was 4. So if you look at this, if I do the reverse calculation, I can find the terms. You see, the next term, the second difference has to be 4. So, if I add 4, then what do I get? Well, adding 4 to 21 will give me 25, correct? And then, adding 25 to 67 will give me the next term. You get the idea, right? 5 plus 7 is 12, 2, 1 and 6, 1, 7 and 2, 9. 92 will become the next term. Do you see that? You can try it, get the next terms like this. So, we know that the second difference is constant. Correct? So, if I add 4 to 25, what do I get? I get 29 this time and adding 29 to 92 will give me the second term after the terms given to us. So, 9 plus 2 is 11 and then we get 121. You get the idea. So, likewise, we can actually get more terms. However, the question says, find the general term and then write the next term. Anyway, if you are stuck at finding the general term, um, well, at least you know or have an idea of how do we get the other terms we could do the reverse calculation. Now, how do we find the general term? We'll come back to the logic once we do the polynomial. Right? So, we are just going back and forth just to have a good understanding of solving such questions. Okay, so let's go to the polynomial approach where we know that the second difference is 4. So, the second difference is 4. So, we can now say that the polynomial equations which could represent this data will be Tx equals to Ax square plus Bx plus C. Now, since the second difference is constant, let me write down here, we found that the second difference is constant.
and it is equal to 4. Well, some of you know that if second difference is 4, then the value of a will be what? Well, this implies that the value of a can be calculated as 4 divided by 2 times 1, which is 2. So, so we'll use the shortcut method. So, we can say a is 2. So, we get 2x squared plus bx plus c. Now, to find the value of b and c, we can use the terms given, right? 7, 16, 29, 46. So, that means we could use the term 7, 16. So, we know t1 is 7. So, if I put 1 here, I get 2 plus b plus c, right? And that gives us that 7 minus 2 is equal to b plus c or b plus c is 5. Is that clear to you? Now, I could use the term 16. So, let me write t2 as equal to 16. So, that means x is 2 for me. 2 times 2 square plus b times 2 plus c. So, we get 16 equals 2. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 2b plus c or 16 minus 8 is 8 which is equal to 2b plus c. We can name these equations as our equation number 1 and 2. So, if I do equation 2 minus equation 1, what do I get? 8 minus 5 is 3, 2b minus b is b and c minus c is 0. We get the value of b as 3. Substituting 3 here, we get 3 plus c equals to 5 or c is equals to 5 minus 3 which is 2. So, we have the values of a, b and c, right? We figured out that a was 2, b is also, b is 3 and c is 2. And therefore, the equation could be written as t of x, the general term, is 2x square plus 3x plus 2. Correct? So, that is how we could get the equation. But this is slightly difficult for many students. Well, if you know polynomials very well, you can definitely follow this method and get the solution perfect. But if not, then we have to follow our logic. So, let's get back to logic, right? Let's get back to logic. Okay. So, what are we working with? We are working with the terms 7, 16, 29, 46, 67, and so on, right? Now, to build our formula, we know this is x values, right? The term numbers as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So, let us do step by step. Since we know that the second difference is constant, let's look into the x square values. So, the x square values, 1 square is 1, 2 square is 4, 3 square is 9, 4 square is 16, 5 square is 25. So, once we have x square values, which are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, they are not what we need. We need 7, 16, 29, 46, 67. So, let's find the difference. How much do we need to add? So, difference between 7 and 1 is 6. Difference between 16 and 4 is 12. 29 and 9 is 20. 46 and 16 is 30. And 67 and 25 is, is 40, uh, 7, 42, correct? So, that becomes the common difference. Now, the idea is, what should we add to x squared to get the term? That is what we are looking into. Do you see some kind of pattern 
in the difference, which is 16, 12, 20, 30, 42. Here is where you need to think broadly. 16, uh, 6, 12, 20, 30, 42. 6 is 2 times 3. 12 is 3 times 4. 20 is 4 times 5. 30 is 5 times 6. And 42 is 6 times 7. You see the pattern. You get the idea. So that means to the x square, if we add these terms, we can actually get our formula. Now, in the first term, we have 2 times 3. Can you generalize this in terms of the term number, which is 1, 2, 3, 4? Well, clearly, we could. And we could write this as what? Well, we could write 2 times 3 as x plus 1 times x plus 2. Do you understand? 3 times 4, 1 more than 2, right? 1 more than 2 is 3, 2 more than 2 is 4, 1 more than 3 is 4, 2 more than 3 is 5. You get the idea, right? So, that gives you the formula. Now, we could combine the two and write our general term as x square plus the term x plus 1 times x plus 2. Perfect. Well, you could expand this and then simplify and get the result which we got in the earlier case. But this gives you a good method of solving some very difficult questions. Perfect, right? Let's expand this and simplify. x times x plus 1 times x plus 2 will give us x square plus 2x plus x plus 2. And then we can simplify this further x square plus x square is 2x square, 2x plus x is 3x plus 2, correct? We get exactly the same formula. And to find the next three terms, 6, 7, and 8, we can substitute the values, correct? So, you can substitute 6 and find the value and then calculate for the 7th and also the 8th term. I'll leave that as an exercise for most of the students. But I hope you understand how we can actually find a pattern rule for such difficult nonlinear patterns. You get the idea. So we actually began with this. The strategy was to figure out what kind of pattern it could be. Second difference was constant, which clearly indicates that the quadratic equation will be our solution. Now, how do we get this quadratic equation? One method is to utilize the knowledge of polynomials. The other one is to follow our logic. Logical process can be followed by any student who is not expert in polynomial type of equation solving. Just as we showed you a process here, it helps to really find an equation for many complicated questions. I hope that makes sense. Feel free to share your comments. If you subscribe and like my videos, that would be great. You can always join my classes to learn more and excel in mathematics. Thanks for your time and all the best.